This time, it's all about what appeared at the ski resort. Are you ready to face the fear? I knew a man who went by the name Yamada, a part-time hunter, or more precisely, a Matagi. He wasn't a full-time hunter but had another primary job, making him a seasonal hunter. We met through work, but since he preferred not to let his personal details get out, I'll refrain from mentioning both his main profession and mine. I'll also keep the location a secret. Years ago, during the winter, I received a message from Yamada. At that time, there were plans to build a ski resort on the mountain he hunted on, not owned by him, but where he conducted his hunting. Yamada was involved in a campaign against the construction, along with an environmental group, and he asked for my help. Even though a new road had already been built on the north side of the mountain in anticipation of the ski resort, and it seemed too late to change anything, the matter seemed related to my work. So, using my weekend, I went to see Yamada. I stayed overnight at his place on Saturday and got a full briefing on the campaign. The next day, we planned to go see the proposed site. We headed out in the morning with skis. Just the two of us looked over the site and took photos. Although we planned to head back down the mountain by afternoon, right before leaving, Yamada said he had something impressive to show me. And led me to a slope slightly away from the proposed ski site. He took out some clothes and shirts from his backpack, tied them to what seemed like a sled, and slid it down the slope. The sled eventually stopped after sliding quite a bit, appearing much smaller from our vantage point. As we watched the sled from above, suddenly, figures about the height of an elementary school child and white in appearance began to gather around the sled. At first, I thought they were animals, but they were unmistakably walking on two legs. As they collected in numbers, they clumped together like a ball and swarmed over the sled. If they build the ski resort, those creatures will devour everyone, Yamada commented. It felt like a scene straight out of a bizarre tale, but it was broad daylight, and all I could do was stare in bewildered silence. It was a moment that made me realize the mountain was a realm apart. After that, we returned to Yamada's place without incident. Back then, I was in a prime period of my career, slightly shaken by the experience, and decided to stay away from things I couldn't understand. Eventually, the ski resort was built, and there were no stories about monsters. Since then, Yamada and I have drifted apart, and nowadays, we only contact each other through New Year's cards. Looking back, I wonder if it was a missed opportunity to step into a fantasy world. So, how did you find this story? The mountains seem to be home to various beings, with many stories about them. It's very interesting to think about these entities. But remember, don't venture too deeply into the wilderness. Otherwise, you might end up like me. Until our next tale, see you then.